Arthropleura, the scariest invertebrate that ever lived. The animal kingdom has featured several frightening monsters over the ages. From birds, reptiles, cats and dogs, to fish, mollusks, jellyfish, and everything in between. Prehistory in particular seems to have been literally crawling with all sorts of creepy critters straight out of your worst nightmares. The subject of today's video might be a little unorthodox, but it is about as scary as any dinosaur or snake you've ever seen. Now, without further ado, we give you Arthropleura, the largest millipede of all time. What is Arthropleura? The word Arthropleura refers to a genus of extinct millipedes. The term itself is Greek, for jointed ribs. The animal is classified under the extinct Arthropleuridae family, which in turn is under the Myriapoda subphylum along with modern millipedes and centipedes. Arthropleura was first discovered in 1854 by German paleontologist Hermann von Meyer. Since then, there have been 60 discoveries across North America, Europe, and even the United Kingdom. The most complete fossil was discovered in Howick Bay, Northumberland, England in 2018. Two other fossil remains were discovered in Germany. The preservation of these three fossils was a lucky break for paleontologists because the chitinous exoskeletons tend to decompose quickly over time. The Northumberland fossil looked to have belonged to a specimen that fell into a sandy river and was preserved by the sediment. Most other Arthropleura discoveries are of tracks, impressions, and fossilized footprints in North America and Europe. There are five officially recognized species so far, Arthropleura armata, cristata, feoli, meliushi, and mamata. As a whole, the genus is famed for reaching incredible sizes, with armata being the largest species on record. So far, fossils indicate that Arthropleura was up to 8.5 feet long and 1.8 feet wide, more than enough to cover a human. In fact, it is as long as most road-going cars today. They may have been much bigger, but we're not certain of the extent. Fossil evidence also suggests that this mega millipede was able to raise most of its body and stand at about 2 meters tall. Weight is trickier to gauge, but most experts' estimates are at 110 pounds on average. All in all, Arthropleura was the largest millipede of all time and among the largest land-dwelling invertebrates ever. What did Arthropleura look like? Apart from its incredible bulk, Arthropleura is characterized by an exoskeleton made up of at least 30 segments. Each segment features two protective plates on either side and another across the top. The dorsal part of the plates is covered in small solid nodules called tubercules. The back end of the body, known as the telson, was trapezoidal in shape. Arthropleura shed part of its exoskeleton over time, likely to facilitate growth. These shed exoskeletal segments, or exuviae, are the entirety of fossil finds that form our understanding of this animal. We are yet to uncover a fossilized body. Whether all segments had legs is still unclear, so there are debates over whether this beastly bug had 32 or 64 legs in total. If the animal had a pair of legs on every segment, the total number would be closer to 64. If it had a pair every two segments, the number would have been closer to 32. Arthropleura's legs also featured sets of ventral plates believed to have been respiratory organs. The Northumberland fossil, which featured a fragmented exoskeleton that was 2.5 feet long and 1.8 feet wide, is the current basis for size estimates. Unfortunately, paleontologists have yet to unearth a fossil with a head. However, using other members of Arthropleurity subclass like Microdesimplex, we may have stumbled upon a rough idea. The head likely had a pair of antennae used for navigation and communication. Their eyes, or ocelli, were likely very poor or completely blind. Arthropleura is believed to have been largely dependent on touch and smell to navigate the world. The nature of its mouth part is subject to speculation, but it is fair to assume that the creature had a sizable set of jaws or mandibles. When did Arthropleura live? Fossil dating places Arthropleura somewhere between 359 and 299 million years ago, during the Carboniferous period. Some paleontologists also believe that Arthropleura may have lived on into the early Permian period, around 298 to 293 million years ago. The areas where fossils have been found would have been part of the Laurasian part of the supercontinent Pangaea. Laurasia was made up of what we now call North America, Europe, and west to Central Asia. Back then, Laurasia was almost entirely within the Earth's tropical zones and almost split in half at the equator. As you can imagine, the environment on the ancient landmass was much different from the typical environments on these continents today. While marine life was still reeling from the immense extinction events that marked the end of the preceding Devonian period, 
the Laurasian landmass was establishing itself as the perfect platform for both flora and fauna to thrive. And thrive they did. Carboniferous Laurasia was teeming with freshwater rivers and lakes that paved the way for lush forests, nutrient-rich marshes, and sweet, sweet swampland. The stage was set for terrestrial creatures to rule the Earth. The rise of the dense vegetation, in particular, would have a dramatic impact on atmospheric oxygen levels as the life-giving gas reached unprecedented levels of approximately 35% by the late Carboniferous period. Various species of mosses, ferns, cycads, and conifers first appeared around this time. Another factor that aided the world's increased oxygen production was cyanobacteria, which had managed to adapt to terrestrial life and reproduce exponentially. We also can't forget about fungi that were thriving because of the perpetual warmth and humidity of the tropics. Terrestrial fungi were key to boosting phosphorus levels in topsoil, which in turn allowed plants to grow larger, photosynthesize more, and produce more oxygen. These early plants had very underdeveloped roots that weren't as far-reaching as most plant roots of today. So without the fungi's hyphal networks, they wouldn't have been able to make enough oxygen to sustain the mega-creatures that would define this new era. The period is called Carboniferous because of the sheer carbon content in the ground. Plants that died and decomposed would fall to the earth and deposit carbon from photosynthesis into the ground. At the same time, the higher oxygen concentration in the air facilitated more frequent wildfires, which would result in large quantities of ash or carbon being deposited into the ground. The few known vertebrate animals of the time included early amphibian-like and reptilian creatures. The earliest of such creatures is Pertipes, widely believed to be the link between marine tetrapods and true amphibians. Later, predatory reptilian animals like Tutatanus, Arthrocosaurus, and Temnospindles would emerge. Unfortunately for the early amphibians and reptiles, the top spot on the food chain was already occupied by a series of extra-large and extra-frightening arthropods. Arthropods had evolved to live on land several million years before the earliest peritopes came onto the scene. Not only did the superbugs have more time to adapt to the new landscapes, but they also had a more efficient way of utilizing the oxygen in the air. Most terrestrial vertebrates breathe using a set of lungs. This method of respiration has very little impact on the animal's growth potential. Instead, vertebrates reach sizes that are efficient for the availability of food, general mobility, and evasion of predators. It also takes several dozens, if not hundreds, of generations to adapt to a new size. However, arthropods basically breathe through their exoskeletons. Their organs absorb oxygen directly from the air when needed without centralized distribution organs like the heart and lungs. This form of respiration has a more direct impact on growth potential, and animals can adapt to new sizes in just a few generations. So, essentially, the arthropods started reaping size gains as soon as the oxygen levels in the air shot up. More oxygen means higher growth potential without compromised mobility. Today, terrestrial invertebrates don't grow so large because atmospheric oxygen levels are much lower at about 21%. Retaining the size of their Carboniferous ancestors would severely compromise movement and make them more vulnerable to predation. Back in the Carboniferous, giant bugs included dragonflies bigger than cats and scorpions the size of toddlers. It was in these hellish, creepy-crawly jungles that our beloved Arthropleura would first emerge. The freakishly large millipede would have gone about its business meandering through the dense brush, absorbing limitless oxygen, and sending ancient lizards and frogs scurrying with terror. Fully grown specimens of Arthropleura likely didn't have any natural predators. More recently, though, the rocks surrounding the Northumberland fossil were dated to the early Carboniferous period, when oxygen levels were closer to what we have today. This means oxygen levels might not have been the primary factor behind Arthropleura's massive size. What was Arthropleura's habitat? While it is clear that Arthropleura was a fairly adaptable creature that thrived in the vegetative boom of the Carboniferous, paleontologists are still debating on its preferred habitat. The first fossils found in Germany were surrounded by shale above coal seams. These findings initially led to the thought that the creature lived in the coal-rich swamps of the time, outside the rainforest proper. However, the Northumberland fossil was embedded in river sediment. This led to a belief that Arthropleura actually preferred open woodlands near freshwater sources or even coastal beaches. Both schools of thought may be true. Perhaps they even lived in the heart of rainforests, since there would have been ample rainfall to keep soil moist. Modern-day millipedes thrive in soft soil, so it's only natural that their giant ancestor would have been content if that requirement was met. What did Arthropleura eat? This is another hotly contested topic filled with theories. 
The general consensus is that Arthropleura was a vegetarian, living off lycopod leaves and stems as well as pteridophyte spores. While it's possible that exuviae we have discovered were just coincidentally fossilized beside such plant matter because of the dense vegetation of the animal's time, this is the most widely accepted theory. However, dissenters of this belief argue that Arthropleura was a dominant predator that hunted other arthropods and even the early amphibians of its time. Other schools of thought lean towards Arthropleura being an omnivore, partaking in both plant matter and flesh. It's inconclusive so far, but a real fossilized carcass could go a long way to ending the debates. How did Arthropleura go extinct? Before the Northumberland discovery in 2018, paleontologists were confident that the gradual decline of oxygen levels in the early Permian period was the main reason Arthropleura died off. However, more recent theories suggest the massive millipede eventually succumbed to predation from more evolved tetrapods. Again, more solid fossil finds would be a great help in solving this puzzle.